Right, welcome guys, welcome everyone to our uh, dynamics lecture, right? Which are usually wonderful, <laughs> right? So, uh, have you checked last year, last week's uh, recordings? Any problem with the recordings of last week? Sure? No problem with the recordings? I think one of them was missing sound again, right? So it was, I think, the solution of work example eight. Uh, so there were no voice. It didn't record again. Uh, I think it's, it's, it is something that, you know, previous lectures doing for me. Like, you know, they are muting everything. And I forgot to check them again. So I uploaded a solution for work example eight. I recorded and submitted already, so it should be available to you uh, guys on the video portal. So now today, it is a, a kind of exciting topic that you know already. So what do you think today we will be talking about? What we will be talking about today, which is uh, what? Gyros. Gyros, gyroscopes. So it is very, very important, guys. So the information that you know you gathered already in especially kinematics and kinetics units you will find an application area now that you can use all your knowledge and skills and analyze and understand the gyroscopic motion i mean even understanding how a gyro works and in which kind of applications we can use gyros is quite, I think, interesting and important thing. Um, and I'm sure you will find it quite useful. Right? And I also accept that you know, the working principle of gyros in general is one of the most difficult concepts to understand and analyze, actually. But when you see the real life applications, you feel that, OK, I need to learn and I need to like, you know, be able to explain uh, what is a gyroscopic motion. So when we start the topic uh, initially, before I go into much detail, I will try to give you some opportunities to uh, watch and discuss between you guys, and I hope it will be able to help you to uh, understand and try to, I mean, ex you will be able to explain at the end what is a gyroscope. Are you all checking again our textbooks? Yes. Right? And make sure that at least like, you know, one time before the exam, you check our textbook. This is quite important to us, guys, to continue uh, having this book for our future students. Okay. Sorry? The book really is a helpful piece. That's great. Only what? Of course, yeah, they are, they are all open, but the final exam will be closed book. And you already know our exam time, day? Yes. When it is? Exam, dynamics, 24? Yes. What time? 9 a.m.? Right, okay. So you already know that, and this is quite important. So make sure that you know you are revising. And just one announcement before I start. Uh, so this week, actually tomorrow, we are finalizing our topics. So gyroscopic motion will also uh, finish tomorrow. So what will happen next week? Revision. revision. So I'm going to give you tomorrow uh, a revision. I will send you an email about this, reminder email. So you will have a couple of days to let me know which topics you want me to go over in the revision week. So based on your selections of the topics, then I will prepare more uh, questions and I will solve them next week in both lectures. And you will also have a chance to kind of revise with me in a way on the most difficult 
topics that you think they are difficult, okay? So please make sure that you, know, you are voting uh, for the topic that you want me to cover again next week. So uh, again, before I start, I think it is a good idea to watch a video about gyroscopes and briefly discuss about this. Sorry? I know, I've heard of this before. Didn't, right. didn't, we use, didn't we also try to use gyroscopes to create compact cars? cars? Yeah, in different applications, yes. Welcome, guys. So here is a video, and please try to understand the concept and how gyros are working to balance the boat. The video should have voice, but interesting. But anyway, this equipment acts as a gyro and trying to balance the boat. But how, how does it do that? Okay. There is another one. So when he engages the system, you can see that actually it is quite effective in cancelling the kind of waves, effect of waves. I believe you got the point, guys, but I just want to show uh, one more video to maybe like, you know, help you understand how a gyro works. So this is a spinning gyro you can see, and it always keep its direction. Probably when you think both videos together, it will help you to make comments or explain how a gyro works, actually. So now, please try to talk a bit about this and try to explain each other, guys, how it could work. What could be the principle? Any idea? Um, ju just one other example, guys. I just want to give you one more example. It may also help you again. So anyone who is not uh, cycling or has not cycled at all, so you all 
use bicycle at some point, right? I love using bicycles. Great. So you are cycling relatively high speed, and you will turn right. What you do? Are you, or are you just leaning towards right? Or maybe if you want to turn right, maybe you are leaning left. I don't know. Yeah. So it's probably like you know you are just avoiding turning the uh, rod, right? We are tilting exactly. So sometimes just tilting will be enough. How how it is possible at all? Normally you should go straight, but when you are leaning right, some somehow bicycle also rotates to right. This also will help you to understand how we stabilize the boat using gyroscopes. Because in the bicycle, the wheels are acting effectively like gyros. Exactly, an interaction of kind of angular momentum, correct. Uh, but again, try to discuss try to discuss and ask what she thinks as well. But essentially, you are right. It's all about angular momentum, right? But somehow, again, it is maybe interaction of different types of angular momentum and forces or moments. Because when you are leaning on one side, actually, you are applying kind of a moment on the gyros, which are wheels, right? So wheels are rotating in the plane. And you are kind of applying a moment uh, which is perpendicular to the angular momentum vector. So this, again, should help you to explain what is happening the, in the boat gyro, kind of. How it can keep the boat balanced. Now I think, you know, we have a couple minutes more to discuss. Uh, please ask to the person next to you what they think. And no one around you. <laughs> so what, what do you think? Right. So there is a kind of angular momentum, right? Because it is rotating with high speed, kind of high angular velocity. So then it is developing a kind of angular momentum. And when you try to change the uh, angular momentum vector's direction, it is kind of generating a bit like an opposite effect in a way. But again, if, if you think like, you know, for example, if I am turning right with my bicycle and I'm leaning on right, right, so there should be some other force that balancing me as well, like, because if I lean too much, then, you know, I can, you know, fall over, right? Does it make sense? <laughs> <laughs> it will make sense, hopefully, at least tomorrow. Ah, you, you, you missed the most important point. Yeah. What do you think, guys? <laughs> but it's a good product, isn't it? Like, you know, it's a good yeah, yeah, no, 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 that was kind of interesting. Wait, but don't bikes but don't bikes stabilize themselves with the gyroscopes and you tilt and you and you tilt into the curve in order in order for the in order for you to not experience any undesirable forces that could that could get you Well off. again I there are no gyros in the bikes, right? But your gyros are actually helping to keep the bike balanced. So we actually have gyros in our bodies where it could be. I mean not like that gyro but the you know brain. Our brain has sensors that could be that could be our it, brain, brain. inner ears. Yes, it's connected yeah. to sensors inside our ears that detect balance. Exactly. So we have actually a gyros in the body, as I said, inner ears acting as gyros to keep you balanced. So almost the same principle is used when we try to keep the boat uh, in balance as well, but again, obviously in a bit more like mechanical way. 
So let me a bit go forward. So you see, guys, this is one of the first gyros to be used in the. They are like you know 25 tons gyroscopes, and it was used 1917. Can you imagine? I think it was the transatlantic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the first ship using gyroscopic stabilization. So, do you know what was the reason that they tried to use gyros? Because it is 25 tons, and it is a big investment, and it is a big kind of weight for a transatlantic, right? What was the point, do you think? Stabilizing, but why you would stabilize? No, I think this is just normal uh, ship, cruise ship probably. Comfort, comfort, right? Exactly. So the main purpose for using first gyros in the ships was comfort in transatlantics because many people were feeling nauseous, right? And in order to avoid that, some genius engineers invented these gyroscopes. See, some engineers are, I don't know, at different level, right? So they invented this gyroscopes 100 years ago, and today we are trying to understand how they work actually, right? With all the new techniques and equipment and education and everything, all with our, like, you know, I don't know, uh, technical resources, we are still trying to understand how they work, and it takes time for us, right? So, it, I mean, we need to respect a bit more <laughs> to those guys, those inventors. Right, so now I think tomorrow I'm going to bring the real, I mean, it is a small gyroscope, but still I will bring the gyro tomorrow, and you will be able to feel the motion, the resistance when you try to, because it will be spinning around an axis, and when you will try to apply a moment, it will show resistance, and it will act a bit like in a different way than you expect. Uh, this is kind of unintuitive as well, the motion of gyroscopes in general. Uh, if you feel it intuitively, it is very good, but normally it is a bit not, uh, in, it is not intuitive at all, so it may uh, act differently than you expect. So, apart from this, now we can a bit like go into detail and we can try to relate the gyroscopic motion with the equations of motions. As you will remember from last week, uh, I was telling or we were talking about that, you know, actually there are three cases that we can uh, apply our equations of motions with different, uh, three different uh, cases depending on the rotation of X, Y, Z frame. So in one of them, the first case was X, Y, Z frame is not moving at all, so capital omega was equal to zero. In the second case, the X, Y, Z frame was rotating with the body itself, so capital omega was equal to omega. And now, we are going to investigate today the third possible uh, solution method in a way where the capital omega will not be equal or it will be different than omega itself. So capital omega, what it represents, capital omega, is rotation of the X, Y, Z frame, rotating frame, and lowercase omega represents angular velocity of the body. Okay? So here we are going to see that actually when they are different, when the angular velocity of the frame is different than the body itself and how we can approach the problem for solving equations of motions. So first, uh, we will try to show you or we will try to analyze how we can represent the motion of this uh, rotating top. We are going to use Euler's angles. There are three angles that we can completely uh, explain or demonstrate the rotation of the top. 
And for defining this position, initially we are fixing the rotating x, y, z frame with the inertial frame, capital X, Y, Z frame. So initially, we fix that second set of uh, frames with the inertial frame. Based on these assumptions, now we can step by step show how the motion of the top actually develops or how it occurs, right? So the first thing, now imagine again, initially, both frames are coincident and parallel to each other. So the first angle, the first motion you can think is rotation about the capital Z axis. So when you rotate, now you need to rotate the top about the Z axis with the angle phi. So this is your first position after you apply the angle phi. On top of this motion, now we are giving another rotation about the x-axis. We call it notation, so this was precession. Following that theta, now we can apply on top of this second frame. Now we are rotating our top about or around the Z axis, which we call it spin. So with these three angles, we call them Euler's angles, we can completely identify the rotation of the top. So this is quite an important aspect, and it is important to know the names of these angles. So one is precession, notation, and spin. It is quite clear, actually. Spin is about the z-axis. Precession about the vertical capital Z axis. And notation is about or around x-axis. So it is quite important to identify uh, those angles because in some questions, it may give you directly, so what is precession, what is notation, what is spin angles, for example. So it is really important to know what these uh, terms or angles refers to. Yeah. So just let me try to explain this, maybe. So the first one, the precession is about z-axis, vertical z-axis, OK? So the notation is, this is our x-axis, imagine. So notation is about rotation about the x-axis. Spin is rotation about its own axis. So these are three angles which help us to identify or define the motion of a gyro top in general. And as I said, it is quite important to know what these angles are referring to. And now, as I said, I'm going to now show you how we can actually analyze a system when the Capital omega is not equal to omega. I am again repeating one more time, guys, because I know that it may be difficult sometimes what each angles or what each rotation angles refers to. The capital omega here, it is the rotation of the frame, our x, y, z frame, rotating frame. And lowercase omega is the angular velocity or rotation of the body itself. And now, in this specific case of rotating top, we will demonstrate that actually they are quite different, or they are different, and I will try to show you how we use it to analyze the gyroscopic motion. And this actually is, I mean, in a couple examples maybe it can be used. One of them is analyzing gyroscopic motion. Again, the reason, I think we went over this last week, but uh, the main point 
for selecting these angles is to make sure that our moments of inertia terms are constant during the motion. And I'm going to show you shortly why it is the case, why inertia remains constant when we select capital omega not equal to omega itself. Uh, these are again from last week, guys, main equations. You are going to get these equations in the formula sheet and just make sure that you know you understand the difference between the equations that you are given. Because this is the main point. I don't expect you to derive the equations. I don't expect you to remember the equations. There is no point on remembering because they are quite low skills. But the most important thing is you need to be able to select and apply the right equations. I think here one of the most important thing is, uh, again, knowing the equations are quite important, but also what the terms in those equations represent. Because I advise you to read what they are actually referring to. Capital X, y, capital Omega X, Y, Z are respective components measured from the inertial frame and also the time derivatives are measured with respect to rotating frame. Correct. Now, we are going to see why capital omega is not equal to omega itself in this specific case. The main reason, because the top is symmetrical and we don't need to attach x, y, z to the spinning top. What, what I mean by this? So this z axis is the kind of symmetry axis of the top, right? And I'm just telling it, uh, I may not repeat two times, probably first time I will try to say it right. Since the Z axis is the symmetry axis, even if the X, Y, Z frame will not rotate with the same speed as the body itself, still during the rotation, the moment of inertia terms will be constant. Does it make sense? No. I know this is a bit like, you know, <laughs> a difficult concept to explain as well. Uh, it may be a bit difficult to digest as well initially, but this is one of the most enjoyable concepts as well in dynamics. I think you don't agree, right? It is, it is a bit, but don't worry about this too much because... Right. So, again, it is written here as well, but inertial properties of the top will be same, will be constant during the motion if we give, if we do not rotate the body about the z-axis itself. So this is, this, is the main, this is the main thing. So therefore, if our axis X, Y, Z frame will be rotating with omega P plus omega N, this will satisfy the requirement and our inertial properties will be the same. So what do we mean by that? Again, I'm not sure it will help, but imagine now, the top is rotating about its own axis, okay? But you don't need to attach the X, Y, Z rotating frame to this. So your X, Y, Z doesn't need to rotate with the spin rate. But since you need to still keep the Z axis in the middle of the, uh, as a central axis of the top, still you have to apply notation to your rotating frame and also you need to apply precession in order to keep the z axis always in the always as a central 
axis of the top. This is the main point. So during the rotation, that z axis, that z axis during the rotation should always be in its position in the center of the top. So in order to ensure that, you have to apply omega n and omega p to the frame. I mean, this is, I think, the explanation for that. And now, since we know that, since we know that the top or the frame, sorry, doesn't need to rotate uh, with the spin rate as well, so it is enough or it is required the frame to be rotating with omega p and omega n. So now what we do here, writing the omega, what is omega? Angular velocity of the body, body, right? So it has different components along x, y, z frame. So now we have different components as you can see. We have omega n along x direction and omega p has components along y axis and also z axis. So when you combine them together along different axis, this is the angular velocity we get for the top itself. But as I just explained here, capital omega, angular velocity of the frame is different because it only has omega p and omega n. Here we have both components, omega p, omega n, on, and omega s. So this is showing us that why omega and capital omega are different. What we have established so far, we understood that capital omega and omega are different when we want to analyze gyroscopic motion or the motion of a top. Since we know that, we now can use our equations that we developed earlier or showed earlier. And we are making some couple uh, assumptions or simplifications or substit substitutions. So we can set x, y, z frame or axis as the principal axis. And due to the symmetry, i, x, and i, y of the top will be the same and obviously iz will be different. So these are our equations of motion, guys, and each of these equations are applicable to a rotation about a fixed point. So what is fixed point? This is the fixed point of, for example, uh, the rotation of the top. We can apply those equations with respect to point O in that case. But you can see these equations are quite complicated and we are not ready to deal with them yet. So we need to make further simplifications to make sure that actually we can deal with the problem in it is simple, simplest terms and then you know, at least gain the main idea and understanding about gyroscopes. Later on, we can deal with those problems if necessary, right? So we are going to now make more simplifications and we are going to talk a bit about uh, a specific type of gyroscopic motion which is called, which is called steady precession. It can be, I mean, probably like, you know, you were playing with uh, tops, how we call them, rotating tops or something? Yes, yeah, spinning tops. Uh, so from childhood, I'm sure you observed the steady precession, but probably you just observe it very short, um, short time because it will appear that the top is having a steady precession for a very short time and after that you will see the notation angle will be increasing and your top is kind of losing its stability in a way. So you can actually imagine that this is the most stable rotation that the gyro top uh, shows. Uh, for a very short time. So what we mean by that? In this case, notation angle, precession, and spin, they are all constant, as I said, for a very short time, but we can start analyzing the gyroscopes 
by this assumption. In that case, as you can see, our equations are greatly simplified because we already like we don't need to deal with two of our equations already. And again, making some further simplifications and substitutions, you can see it is further simplified, and you can see that you know you are getting all these equations in the formula sheet as well. So this is we already discussed. And now about gyroscopic effect, we can talk a bit more. Which one? Right there. In M. Sigma L X on the screen. Right hand I in I greater phi sine cosine theta. Here. That I does not have does not have a um, it does not have a subscript. What is this supposed to be a moment of inertia about? That one here, right? Yes. That should be I Z. I'm going to check this, but it should be I Z. Interesting. Like normally, we don't lose any subscripts. But thank you for that. I'm going to check, but it's supposed to be I Z, as far as I think. I will check that. Thank you. Yeah. Right. I will make amendments if necessary. But thank, thank you for pointing this out. Great. Z, X, just a second. Right, I will check that, guys. Yeah. yeah. Right, correct. Does it make sense? So it's not I, Z, I. Representing I, X, and I, Y, they are equal to each other. Thank you, thank you for that. There is no need for any amendments, I believe. Okay. Right, thank you. Right, so gyroscopic effect. Normally, if we get, again make further simplification and if we think that theta, angle theta is 90 degrees, as you can see here, and we have a spin about our z axis, our equation of motion reduces to that quite simple equation. So as you will be experiencing tomorrow, normally I think you would expect that top would go down as a result of what? Gravity, right? So what is happening here? Why it is not falling down? Normally, again, uh, maybe I should bring it today, but anyway, it is too late now. So why and how you think it is not going down? Or what would be the ideal conditions to satisfy this. Again, as you can see in the equation, the only positive moment acting on the system is due to the gravity, and which is equal to omega times rg. So if this effect is balanced by the spin of the gyrotop, then you will see that actually it is not falling down, but it is balanced by the spin of the gyrotop. So this is again one of the unintuitive aspects of the gyroscopic motion, and we call it gyroscopic effect. And tomorrow, as I said in the morning, I'm going to demonstrate to you, and you will be also demonstrate it yourself, guys. And obviously, one of the important things to think about practical applications. Why it could be used, where it could be used. Is, 
the bucket is not spinning about its own axis, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of gyroscopic effects, maybe other so effects. Like the centrifugal This is the thing, yeah. right? For gyroscopic motion, there should be a high speed rotation about at least one of the axes. Yeah. But this has centrifugal force in it as well. It will, but it will not be it will not have a significant effect on the motion at least. Right? And other thing guys, since we have a high velocity angular velocity speed or spin about the Z axis. Actually, you will see that the system is having a precession. Because of that spin, you will observe tomorrow that actually there is a rotation about this capital Z axis, which we call precession. Again, tomorrow morning, you will be able to see that. How many of you guys joining me tomorrow in the morning? Great. Great. Good. So, sorry about the timing of the lectures, but it was the only time available to cover our bank holiday uh, lectures. And it will be where? Yes. Where? This is not here. This is tomorrow at 9, we will be in uh, Roscoe building. Roscoe? Yes. <laughs> Good. So, please check your time. Can you? Can you please check your timetables, guys? One of you at least to confirm the location. Is it okay? Good. Sometimes you know I also uh, mix the location, so I don't want to give you <laughs> and be there myself. One like you know, it will be not good. Good. But I think Roscoe is quite uh, close to here, right? So it is not far. So I hope it will not create any extra difficulty for you. And normally. I used to complain about having lectures at 4 p.m. because, again, you are at the lowest level of your energy. You as well, guys, everyone. So we will see tomorrow morning how we, <laughs> we will be at 9 a.m. in the morning as well. So it will be kind of a good uh, experience. Yeah. <laughs> I think ideal time is about 10 a.m. in the morning, not 9. Uh, but they are all ideal cases. Uh, in five, I'm teaching here for five years now, and I never had the pleasure of teaching about 10 a.m. or like, you know, 2 p.m., for example. Well, it's all, it's all about a matter of perspective. I consider 9 a.m. a, a, a an ideal time for me to run. Right. Because yeah. I think it really depends. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The rest is just, to be honest, the math. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know the values for sine 60 and cosine 60, where cosine 60 is 0.5 and, sine 60, and the sine of 60 degrees is... Uh... Right, anyway, so this is our equation. And when you will see, when you set this equation, you will see the only way to go forward is to get this second order equation which will give you two possible solutions either 114 radians per second or 5.72 radians per second so how this is possible guys at which at which precession it will rotate one is called high precession another called low Precession. Which one looks more like you know likely to you? Sir, five point seven two radians per second. Right. The reason. One radian per second is equal to nine point. It's around nine point five five revolutions per minute. Multiply that by one hundred fourteen, and that results in one thousand eighty eight rpm. So it will be even higher than the spin itself. If it would be spinning at 114 radians per second, it would be even higher than the spin. Yes, it's spinning at 100 radians per second. Right. So this. 5.72 is the more accurate value. Yeah, this is this is practically. I mean, theoretically, you can get those two results, but practically, you would never achieve that high precession rate. Uh, I believe. So the result supposed to be 5.72 radians per second. So when you give the spin of 110 radians per second to the top, it will be also processing about itself, about the vertical axis with 5.72 radians per second. So tomorrow we are going to go a bit deeper into gyroscopic motion and as I said you will be able to also demonstrate for yourself the gyroscopic motion. So uh, today at 6 p.m. it is our deadline for online assessment two. Uh, if you have any extensions like dust plants or whatever, the deadline will be next week, uh, Thursday again, 6 p.m. guys. And please engage with the survey that I will send you tomorrow, that I will activate tomorrow. And please let me know which topics you are struggling more and which topics you want me to cover next week in the revision week. So thank you very much for joining today and hope to see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Thank you. If the precession is constant, why is that not zero? Because it's the derivative. The, this is angular uh, velocity, right? Nice you too, thank you very much. I mean, this, this is representing the angular velocity itself. Yeah. Okay? So the angular velocity itself is. Oh, oh okay. Not the. Ah, I thought. Okay, yes. Yeah. Like yeah. the angle, yes. That's great.